helping out in this video we have a main power supply and uh, stuff we're covering here is stuff we covered in earlier videos but we put them together for the most part and uh, so we got a main power supply here and a backup power supply the battery right now this is providing all the power even though you see a lower current at the supply than the output that is because we have a higher voltage at uh, the input so we work our way over here this is a buck converter these two big alligator clips they go to this unit here it takes a higher voltage and outputs a lower voltage but it doesn't just add resistance or something and create waste heat it actually converts that uh, higher voltage into more current out than what you have to put in and uh, it should be closer to a third because it's five times as much uh, voltage so it should be a third of the current at the input versus the output but it looks like about halfway for whatever we do have to power this this has some power loss and stuff um stuff uh that uh, you got to be aware of but in any case there's a little USB here coming to this monitor and USB there. So now we have the battery. I'm just going to uh, hit the power button. You'll notice that the LED stayed on right there. There's no current coming out of here. So that's when the battery kicks in. So the power supply was going uh, that way. Now we got the battery positive going that way. Whichever one has the higher voltage will be the one that provides all the current. I'll turn the power back on. We got 15 volts right now. The battery is 13.6 volts so when I go from 14 to 13 now you can see there is uh, no current so that's why I set this to uh, 15 volts because uh, these batteries never get uh, to 15 volts the charger puts it up to 14.6 uh, which you could do right now you could recharge it these diodes make sure that the supplies don't affect each other they just share a ground but you need a complete path from a uh, positive and negative from one to the other and the diode stop that because uh, they're forward biased one way for that one forward biased for that one but when it comes to what uh, gets through there can't go through there because it's reverse bias and whatever gets that way can't go that way because that diode is reverse bias uh, depending on which one has the higher voltage so now we'll get to a schematic diagram of this circuit. First I'm going to take it apart though. We'll uh, disconnect the load right there and uh, that will help avoid sparks and stuff in this area. We could unplug this as well to uh, cut the power even more. And uh, now we might as well just uh, pull that positive there and that doesn't have power anymore. So these two, again, they can't power each other. So neither one of them is powering anything. The power is on and we can we, we can leave that there it doesn't really matter but uh, we'll disconnect from the ground and now we're not uh, connected to anything we'll finish yanking this one off and uh, that one up there that's from the power supply so here is the schematic again we are going to assume that uh, most of the time we got this 15 volt supply for this particular circuit uh, powering it uh, we got the shocky down there so the current can go through the load and back to the supply this is our return path ground and uh, it only returns to this one if that is where the power came from but if we lose the voltage or whatever or it drops below the battery voltage for whatever reason um, then the battery will kick in and then while well, this one's providing power that diode, that shot key diode, makes it so it can't uh, charge that battery anymore, which is ultimately what it would do if we had a connection there. It can't go that way, it can only go this way. And then uh, if the battery is powering because that cuts out, uh, the battery is not gonna waste any uh, charge going into the supply or whatever, and, uh, or if it's short circuit, it broke or something, the uh, battery is not gonna power it and because of that shot key diode. So each one of these can block up to 45 volts well reverse bias. So when that's more positive, that side's more negative. Um, so we're nowhere near that in this circuit. And they can handle 15 amps of current. That's part of the number right there, 15SQ045. Uh, so in any case, let's say this cuts out. Um, we topped this off. I charged it to 14.6 volts, but it drifted down to 13.6 volts over uh, time. That's what it does um, pretty quickly. So if it's fully charged, you can generally assume it's like 13.6 volts approximately. And then as it uh, uses up uh, power, it drops down to about 12.8, about halfway or so. And then if you keep discharging it, it could drop to 10 volts, which you don't want it to do. You don't want it to drop below uh, 10 volts. It should have a BMS protection circuitry in it that cuts off the battery at that point where you lose all power. Um, but just stay away from 10 volts. Uh, make sure you're watching it and uh, keep it uh, charged. You don't have to go up to 14.6.
You could even do a float charge. You could have something else keeping 13.6 across there uh, at all times. But in any case, we're not going to go over charging the batteries too much. Just thought I would quickly introduce that. But we have that higher voltage coming in, a uh, lower voltage going out with either case here. So it's converting that voltage into more current. So you don't need as much current coming from the supply or the battery as you're getting out. It looks like uh, the buck converter I was using though, um, it just uh, had the clamps and then it was USB out, but I added a monitor to look at too. So we got a little bit more voltage on the display or a little more current, I mean, on the display than uh, we would have without that extra unit there, but not a lot. I think it's like 17 milliamps of current extra. But uh, in any case, we saw it was closer to half there. So we could have got a more efficient buck converter and it probably would have been really close to uh, three times as much current out as what we had to supply. But that's stuff we could look at in other videos. Um, for this one, um, we need a five volts because this is a five volt LED module right there. And I didn't want to add a bunch of other stuff. Uh, it's just the easiest to use the buck converter. This is a fair amount of power. So that is what I did.